On the evening of the 27th of March 1980, a storm in the North Sea with winds gusting up to 45 miles an hour causes 40-foot waves that capsize the Alexander Kieland oil platform, killing 123 men. But was it just the weather that devastated the Kieland? Alexander L. Kieland is a Norwegian offshore semi-submersible drilling rig. The rig is named after Norwegian novelist Alexander Lange Kjellert. It's built at a French shipyard as a mobile drilling platform and delivered to Stavanger Drilling in July 1976. It's initially designed as a drilling platform, but there's a shortage of drilling contracts and so the platform is temporarily repurposed to offer living accommodation for personnel from several nearby rigs. It's used as a floating hotel or floatel for employees on the nearby Edda 2-7C platform. Workers can walk to the floatel through a sea bridge connecting the Edda oil rig to the platform. On the deck, there are shipping container apartments to accommodate up to 348 crew and a drilling derrick. There's a helipad so crew can be transported by helicopter to and from land and other platforms. The platform feels like a bustling airport terminal with helicopters coming and going at all times day and night. The platform has five vertical columns with a height of 115 feet and 28 feet in diameter which act as pontoons to provide buoyancy for the platform. They can also be partially filled with seawater which provides stability. The columns are placed at five points around the platform like a pentagon, with bracing running between them and the deck. The braces are welded in place using a fillet weld. A fillet weld is a type of weld used to attach a metal plate to another at a 90 degree angle. The welds are subjected to extreme forces from the huge pontoons and braces pulling in different directions. Without this bracing, the structure would be pulled apart by the relentless swell and storms in the North Sea. Fatigue cracks in the fillet weld should be re-welded and maintained over time. The Kierland is 338 feet by 325 feet and weighs over 10,000 tons. The platform has six anchors holding the rig in position. In 1978, several new accommodation container blocks are added to the drilling deck of the platform, increasing its total capacity to 386 people. If they get a lucrative drilling contract, these containers are simple to remove. The crew members talk about the platform as one of the greatest in the North Sea. In 1980, the Kieland is contracted to Philips Petroleum. On the 27th of March 1980, the rig's located 200 miles east of Dundee, Scotland. A storm is approaching and the crew are readying the Edda oil platform for impact. As the storm builds, it knocks out several electrical outputs on the platform. Helicopters are grounded and management decide to evacuate non-essential crew from the Edda to the Kielat. The crew batten down and secure all drilling and manufacturing gear on the deck of the Edda. Non-essential crew and support staff transfer to the Kielant via the sea bridge. The winds are reaching up to 70 miles an hour. 50-foot waves batter the two platforms. As the swell rolls through and the winds push against the structure, the welds that secure the support braces are working to withstand the extreme forces. The head count is 212 people on board the Kierland when they remove the sea bridge and disconnect from the Edda. The Alexander Kierland drifts slightly away from the Edda. Crew who transfer to the Kierland find relief in a safe space. They're reading, sleeping or eating in the cafeteria. At 1830, the crew hear a loud bang which echoes through the rig. They assume it's a huge wave hitting the deck. Then, two more quickly follow like a loud crack followed by a trembling that reverberates through the platform. A fatigue crack in a fillet weld gives way and the braces supporting one of the pontoons are pulled apart. As the pontoon is ripped from the platform, the weight shifts in an instant, knocking people off their feet. The crew members can't process what's happening. They can feel the Alexander Kierland is healing to one side. The platform tilts 40 degrees in seconds. Some men relaxing in their cabins can feel the keel line start to tilt, but there's no announcement from the control center. They don't know if they should stay in their cabins or make their way to their muster stations. Water seeps into the passageways and men are slipping as they try to navigate the corridors. Crew member Jan Janssen hears men screaming in the corridors and in their cabins. 130 men gather in the designated emergency muster stations located in the mess hall and cinema. 
Jan Janssen fights his way to the deck to secure the lifeboats. When he reaches the deck, all he can see is the dark foggy sky. The intense rain and cold wind lashes his face. The heavy waves continue to pound the deck of the rig, causing violent shakes throughout the keelheads. The rig rolls in the swell. The weight of the lifeboats shift and three of the seven on board are washed off the deck in the swell and heavy seas. To secure the four remaining lifeboats, Janssen and his colleagues must get to the other side of the platform which is riding high out of the water. They have to climb the sloping deck of the Kielat. If they slip, below them is the freezing ocean. But even if they make it to the lifeboats, they can't be certain they'll be able to lower them into the sea. They fight their way up the tilting platform. Some men make it up the platform and lower themselves into the lifeboats. But the Kieland continues to tilt. The generators cut out, casting the platform into darkness. Men are stuck inside the accommodation blocks. The angle of the floor is so steep they can't climb out. Chairs and tables are sliding down the floor in pitch black rooms. On the deck, men are climbing the handrails to get to the highest point of the rig. If they stay in position holding the handrails, no ship can reach them. The wind is blowing at 60 to 70 miles an hour with heavy fog engulfing the rig. The rig is now healing at a 60 degree angle. Reaching a lifeboat seems like the only chance for survival. The only alternative is to take their chances in the freezing North Sea. Those who make it to the lifeboat still face a major problem. The lifeboat is usually deployed using gravity to drop into the ocean. The angle of the tilting rig means the lifeboats don't have a clear path to the sea. Men struggle to release each lifeboat, but three are stuck and don't budge. Eventually, they manage to release the last lifeboat and there isn't enough space for all the men. With no options left, the remaining crew start to jump from high on the rig. They plunge several feet under the frigid waters with no life jackets or survival suits. As they hit the freezing water, they have to fight their body's impulse to gasp for air or they'll inhale water and drown. Cold water shock sends their heart rate and blood pressure soaring. Crew from the Edda now release the Edda's lifeboats and send out a distress signal. The Alexander Keelant is almost 90 degrees. Men in the water are fighting for their lives. They try to hold their composure long enough to catch their breath. Then they start to swim towards the Edda platform. The upper pontoons of the Alexander Keelant are completely out of the water. The listing rig is acting like a sail caught in the high winds. The first anchor chain snaps under the extreme forces, then another until only one anchor chain remains intact. The men still on the platform are now trapped in a sinking vessel. The wind continues to blow. The final anchor chain holding the keel unsteady snaps a little over 20 minutes after the first support brace breaks free. Without any support, the rig slowly rolls, leaving crew members trapped and fighting for their lives. 30 minutes after the first sound of a cracking fillet weld, the 10,000 ton Alexander Keeland rolls over and is fully inverted. 50 men are trapped under the capsized rig. Crew on board the Edda can see men in the water battling the heavy rain and strong winds. If the men in the sea aren't pulled from the water soon, they'll either drown or freeze to death. One of the Keeland's lifeboats surfaces, but it's upside down. Some men in the water climb onto one side. They use their weight and the waves washing over the lifeboat to flip it right side up. They start to pull their colleagues to the safety of the lifeboat, 19 men. Nobody's prepared for such a devastating disaster. Only a handful of the 212 men on board the Kielan make it to their cabin to retrieve their survival suit. A survival suit is like a dry suit that creates an air gap between your body and the water. 47 vessels, 24 helicopters and almost 2,000 men responded to the distress signal from the Edda. Only 89 of the 212 crew survive. 123 drown in the frigid waters. The commission appointed to examine the incident found that a fatigue fracture in a support brace on one of the platform's columns was the direct cause. An insufficient weld wasn't picked up during manufacturing, resulting in the formation of a fracture that grew over time.